Oops. Hey, what y'all saying? Um, okay, first off, I gotta apologize to y'all for that old ass, um, blog talk video. It, <laughs> I recorded it like, what, a week and a half, maybe two weeks ago. And I'm just posting it. My bad. But, um, <laughs> yeah, we'll just move on. I still wanted to post it. So, there's video. <laughs> anyway, we're moving on from that. Um, yeah, so today is a bit of a gloomy day in the Bahamas. It's a cold front is passing. <laughs> and I'm loving this cold weather because it rarely happens. I'm just saying. Because it's normally hot as a camel's ass. I, and that's a bit much to deal with. But so the cold weather's a nice change. Anyway, let me get into this video because I run it on with like eyes of fucking wet a man. So yeah, um, I'm in my new little spot <laughs> uh, of the house. So if y'all hear like any cars passing or people talking as they pass, um, this little bug is flying around. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm by a window. <laughs> uh, what the fuck? These two mosquitoes fighting. Anyway, uh, like I said, let me get in this video, y'all. Yeah? Uh, this is a TV talk video. Um, and I guess we'll start with Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> okay, so um, the whole show started off with Omari and uh, April and Mother Leslie playing with little baby Omega. Or Mega. Is Mega or Omega? Either way, I think it's Mega. I, uh, why didn't name that child up? Anyway. Um, so that was a nice little scene. It was a good refresher from all the fuck shit they normally give us. Uh, which will be later. But um, it was a nice scene to see April and getting along. April and Mother Leslie getting along. And um, she opened up saying how oh, her and her mother ain't um, that close. And they have their issues, and she don't know who her family is, and blah, 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 running on like that. Anyway, yeah, I thought that was an interesting little singing. But, um, they're just nice to each other, they're just cordial, so that was good. Um, what else happened after that? Uh, I think it cut to Masika. She was in the studio singing. I I thought that was T.R. Marie. She, but, um, Homegirl actually, she didn't sound that bad. She actually could hold the tune. So, good for her. <laughs> she shocked the shit out of me. Um. So yeah, her and Burger was in the studio. They was. She told him about the last uh, episode, which was the bill and what went down at the Billboard party, and um. He put in his two cents, if I remember. And then um, she he asked her to be his date to the um. His birthday party. Yeah. And, uh, I was like, okay. And then, um, so they cut to the birthday party, which was, Lord, that was the whole highlight of the whole episode, because this show, if y'all, okay, I'm going to tell y'all now, if y'all see my laptop moving, I'm holding it at an angle so it wouldn't fall off this damn, um, chair. <laughs> but I like this little area because I get good light. <laughs> um, anyway, so... Yeah, they cut off to Burger Birthday Party. And, um... That was a bunch of garbage. It was it was funny, because the people who was there, they looked good and bored. Like, the extras, y'all need to find better extras to look more hype, love, and hip-hop. Because they the same 25 people that y'all just have to every fucking party or gathering that y'all have. Because I know I see two or three of the same people at um that same billboard party in the last episode. I need to stop rubbing that eye because yesterday I woke up and my eye was puffy and I had a flicking interview so I went to the interview with my eye kind of like looking like uh, yeah so I'm just getting all fucking topic eight anyway let me um yeah let me get back on topic um so yeah they got to the birthday party and um Berg well, they was enjoying themselves, having drinks. Berg and Masika cutting up in their little, um, by the bar in their little corner. Then, um, Ray J and Hazel, who I didn't even know knew each other. They, um, came together and they 
was like just chilling, rapping, and then Hazel was saying how Ray J might be the only friend that she has, and I'm like, okay, die on your friends, sweetie. Just saying, I'm just saying. But um, yeah. So Berg makes this um, he comes on stage and he makes his little um, thanks to everybody for coming to the party speech, and then he was bigging up Masika, and he was like, uh, how he was saying that was, he's in love with her or he love her some book fuck shit like that and then she's like i love you too burglary and i'm like she is so s- ill <laughs> but yeah anyway when they cut to tiara i was fucking cracking up because she's like oh shit y'all in here today this shit could be good this could be fucking good <laughs> i was like, fucking dying anyway so um they give Masika the mic. Berg gave Masika the mic. And um she was just saying how she's happy to be here with her longtime friend, but now tonight she's on a date and blah 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 blah. But um she started off with like, um, hey T I see you over there looking good. And TJ's like, Hey bitch <laughs> Yes girl, y'all here she called me. I am putting y'all. I was like, that shit was so funny to me. I don't know why, but I was fucking cracking up. I found that so funny. <laughs> but, um, what else happened? Um, so yeah, she, uh, introduced a new song. Her song, This Masika Now. This little buggy. That scared me just now. But <laughs> she, um, introduced her new song and, um, Hazel realized it was the track that Berg gave her. But um, Ray J fucking messy ass. He's like, and that's your song? And that's your, and that's your track? And that was yours? And I was like, this nigga's so fuck up. Like, <laughs> but I was like, the fuck? Anyway, so Hazel, dumbass, she was like, I noticed that this bitch is singing over my track. She heard me when I poured my heart and soul out onto that track, and now she's using it for hers. What the fuck? And then she's like, I don't know if I should go home or I should spit my verse. And I'm like, bitch, go home. Why would you do that? Why? 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 Why the fuck would you do that? But no, they needed more fucking drama for the show. So this bitch gone and fucking rap her whole verse. In the middle of the dance floor in the party. And I'm like, the fuck? All you see is Hazel bounce around. It's A1 from day one. Blah, 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 blah. It's a love letter. Full page. And I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> what is, what the fuck is wrong with her? Like, who does do that? But who does do that? I, I was so shamed for her. Like, what wrong with you, wait? <laughs> Why? Why? Who's do that? <laughs> Who's do that? Anyway. Um, moving on from that. After the Hazel gave her performance in the middle of the crowd, um, she gone over to the little corner. And um, Masika gone over there. And she's like, why did you do that? Why are you being so rude? And um, Masika wasn't even paying her no mind. So then Burr come over and they had the words... Oh, that's a nice car. What are those? I'm not familiar with them. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so Burr come over and him and Hazel had some words. And then that bring a whole argument with the Hazel Mystic and Young Burger. They had their little issue. They had an argument. And then Tierra came. Tierra nosy ass came over like, eh, let me see what y'all rhyme about. And then she wanted to, like, do her little two cents and Hazel boss up herself and, at the billboard party in her argument. Anyway, y'all. Um, she come in and she was right there just watching. She wasn't saying much, to be honest. Then all of a sudden, fucking bitch-ass and Sierra came. And he saw Brown and Tierra like that shit was her fault. And I'm like... Why you fucking getting in? Why you why you jumping in with a bunch of gals rowing? Like I don't understand. Like that ain't got nothing to do with you. Why you even getting in that? Like just sip your drink and watch from the side like everybody else doing. Like I don't why 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 are you doing that? Who, who do that? What niggas do that? 
Like, you see a bunch of gals rowing, oh, let me fucking get up in this. I'm sorry, I'll just stay to the side and avoid that shit, because I'm not looking for DB time. Oh. But anyway, yeah, so... Then Hazel and Tierra start, ended up rowing, um... What's his face? Sincere, because he was being stupid, which he fucking deserved. I didn't... If Tierra did haul off and fucking licking him in his mouth, like... She has a right to, because he... He been irking me. I mean, she don't have no right to. You shouldn't be putting your hands on anybody, but he just irks me. <laughs> I'm just saying. But um, after homeboy walk off, um, Tierra and Hazel started talking, and then she, she, Hazel started coming to her senses, like, what you were saying really was true. Then Ray J come out of nowhere, like, he was fucking shitting while they was rowing. And he was like, everything all right? You all right? You all righty? And I was like, yeah, you come after the fact, and then you saying how you got this gal back, but yet, where the fuck were you? <laughs> Tierra was on her side more than fucking you. Anyway. Um. Sorry, that was ratchety. I don't care. <laughs> um. So after that, Ray J, he pulled Tierra to the side, and he wanted to apologize to her but then she's like you know what let me not fucking act up in public let, let's take this outside i want no more scene and she's like i want this to be on the blogs in the morning but then i'm like ain't nobody fucking talking about y'all until the show started like ain't nobody knew y'all was walking around no one really cared either because who cares to talk about Ray J? the only time he was relevant is when he made the sex tape with kim kardashian and that he's brandy's little brother so I'm just saying. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, what else? So they had their little apology scene, and then Tierra was like, I know you ain't happy, and some shit like that. And um, he was like, who telling you that? And then she started riddling off him in princess business, how she mad at him for fucking having condoms in his bag, or some dumb shit like that. And then he was like, the only person who could be telling her this is Morgan. Morgan, run him out. And I'm like... Okay. <laughs> I'm tired of him. But he's fucking this over dramatic actress. I can't even. <laughs> anyway, um, what else? Where am I? Yeah. Oh, I talked about that. Okay. So April and her mother was in the kitchen making tea. I can lie, that was a nice little teapot she had though. <laughs> It was nice and set. Uh, anyway, um, so all of a sudden, Mother Chachki was, uh, wait, that's her name, right? Chachki? Are you fucking looking around like someone here to answer me? <laughs> I had shit up myself if someone did, though, because I was in this house by myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, we can call her Chachki for now. So yeah, Mother Chachki fucking bustled crying and... April's like, what's wrong? What's going on? What's happening? Then, um, she was, Mother Chashka was saying how she, um, don't like when April is tell her, the fuck she say? I didn't even write it down. Tell her that she'd be more affectionate to her grand grandson than she was to her. And some bullshit like that. And I'm like, Lord. That was, and then she, and April just let it all out on her, how she really felt. She told her how she wasn't affectionate to her, how why she wanted to know why she left her with her grandmother, like she when she's five years old, like she don't remember anything before that. She don't know much about her brothers and sisters. Excuse me, that was older than her. And um they had their little out. They they really didn't get to no resolution, which I kinda feel bad for April because I really like her. I hope her and her mother get Oh, and Mother Chachki. <laughs> I just like saying that. Um, I hope them two worked out their differences. I hope. Uh, at least off camera, because I guess being on camera probably intimidated her or something. Or she didn't want her business out in the street, which I don't blame her at all. Like, you only need to know what kind of fuck shit I've been doing while this gal was with her grandmother. Nah, none of y'all business. So I hope they came to some resolution. Anyway, so... I didn't write this in my notes, but what's her name? 
Um, not Morgan. Uh, Tierra meet up with Ray J. Mummy, Miss Sonia. And they had their little conversation, which she came to the realization. I, I, honestly, I forget. I really don't care, you know. So moving on. Um, Ray J and Morgan, their little scene, which was stupid. It was unneeded. Like, you didn't need to go meet up at all. I'm sorry. Um, he, they pretty much just end up arguing, basically. Like, he was saying how she's fake and he shouldn't be telling her business. But she, in all honesty, she shouldn't. But if your gal fucking going to your ex-employee and telling her that's her only confidant, well, I mean, what the fuck you expect? She ain't got no loyalty to you no more. I'm just saying. Because, like, you find her and you done bust her ass. So, why you think she could be loyal to you? Oh, wait. So, yeah, whatever. whatever. But something she did say um, that was interesting, like, they rented their cars. And he rented her car. Which I don't understand. Why is he renting you a car if you live in L.A.? Y'all trying to stunt for the show? Like, really? I don't know. Why she don't have her own car? Her credit body. Is she, Ray, J, Ray J was her only client? I don't, I don't get it. So that makes me also wonder, is that house rented too? Like, wait. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> and t Because... They just open up more questions for me. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, oh yeah, Nia. Her and Soldier Boy mess just got on my nerves. They stupid. Nia is dumb. I'm sorry that she had the miscarriage, but y'all may not agree with me, or we can agree to disagree. But um, I think that was the best thing that had happened to her because. You already got a one-year-old that's barely one-year-old and you're pregnant with another baby for another dude and um, this nigga done is don't be on the road so he ain't gonna be taking care of the baby like that. So you could be stuck with two kids under the age of two raising them by yourself pretty much. I don't care what he say. He say he could be there and all that stuff like that but in all reality this niggas go out on tour. And he could be in the studio and things like that. And you really expect him to be with you, helping you raise your two kids under the age of two, like a normal person? I'm just saying. Soldier Boy's a big kid, too. He don't need to be having no churn. He doesn't need to play with other people churn. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, so she kind of locked out in that department. Um, I forget how Love and Hip Hop ended, so we'll just move on from that. No, before I move on from Love and Hip Hop, did y'all see in the preview when fucking Princess get pushed in the pool? <laughs> I was um by my sister and the two the two of us saw it for the first time. He's like, hold on, where the fuck she gone? Then when the preview replayed again, he's like, oh shit, she fall in the pool. <laughs> that shit was funny as hell. Like you fucking trying to throw drink on people and you fighting and you walking but you ain't looking where you walking and that's how you <laughs> not good for us. Let me not say that because I know the situation. <laughs> Next week might be interested. But um yeah. Um okay so I'll move on to The Walking Dead. I didn't really write much notes for it because I remember the episode I just watched it a couple hours ago. Um the fuck is that? Oh. Look at yeah, that curtain behind me is scaring the shit out of me. I'm I'm just saying. <laughs> um yeah the walking dead it was all the, pretty much about carol and i love carol she's a sweetheart she's a sweet lady but she fucking will <coughs> joke anybody will joke any walker and carry on about a day like ain't nothing happened like i really like carol um she might be one of my favorites her and michonne the black chick with the sword yeah i like her those are my two favorites. Um, but yeah, today was about, this episode was about Carol. And, um, her and, Lord, what is his name? Y'all, what is his name? The homeboy who's be with the crossbow, what is his name? 
Lord, I can't remember. Anyway, but yeah, I um, I like them too. I love their friendship. Sorry, I thought I heard a little child. But yeah, I love their friendship. They're um, it's different than everybody else. They're closer, and it seems like they're family or something like that. Like they knew each other from a long time ago. But yeah, um, <laughs> I wish I knew how to fucking edit so I could edit me making all these damn weird faces out <laughs> and looking off into the yonder and being distracted by these shit outside. I need to find another spot without good light in this house <laughs> than this window. <laughs> I'll try something in my room next time, but yeah. This chair is comfortable, so I'm the same. <laughs> um, yeah, so back to Walking Dead. They, uh, Carol and Homeboy was looking. He saw the car that had took Beth. And if you remember, I think it was two, two episodes ago was Beth's episode when you found out where the hell she was and stuff like that. So yeah, they, um, took Beth and, uh, they followed the car up as far as they could up until the car stopped. And I, th I think it was like downtown in Atlanta or something like that. And um, they, the car stopped and they stopped their car and turned it off. And um, I think the, one of the police officers, I forget which one it was, but they got out and um, they, I don't know what they did. It was like they pull in bodies or zombies or something out of the way. That's how it seemed. But um when they try, tried to start the car again, they um, the car wouldn't turn over. They ran out of gas. So um, they held up in a uh, shelter. I mean, yeah, everywhere is shelter to them, but uh, like in a, a battered women's shelter or something, or a battered kids' shelter, something like that. And um, he asked her where she, what, um, how she knew about this place, and then she hesitated and then she ended up telling him the next day she told him that um she stayed there one night and she ended up going to going back to I think her husband was named Bob and then she ended up getting beat up and she thought that was normal but whatever and um what else happened from there they wanted to get a higher vantage point to see if they could find uh, where that car went and survey the area. Sorry. Jesus, what the hell is wrong with me right now? Um, anyway, um, yeah, they wanted to survey the area, so they went to a higher building, and they cut through the building, and they, like, you saw, like, something was following them, and uh, come to find out it was Everybody Hates Chris, the homeboy who played Chris, yeah. I'm gonna just call him that because I can't remember his character's name on the show. So yeah, everybody hates Chris was following them and then um, when they went somewhere to like check out the area, um, they were coming out and I guess, well not I guess, everybody hates Chris, he took their weapons and he pretty much wanted to rob them for their weapons but he got them and he these zombies, well, walk it, walkers were like in a tent and trying to get out and then he ripped the tent open and he got them out so he thought they would have tried, they would have been eaten or whatever but then no one, but then Carol and Homeboy with the crossbow, he, um, they killed them with no problem. Um, so from there, they went to another building or they were, no, they were walking and they went to another, this is, I know I'm all over the place with this because I, I really should start writing notes as I watch these shows. <laughs> but yeah, they, when they left that building, they got off and they made a distraction or something so they could get away. But then they found a van would had the same two cross, would have the cross on the, um, windows like it like that car that took Beth did so they inspected the van to try and figure out where they were and then they saw that as GMR Grand Memorial or GMH Grand Memorial Hospital or something like that um 
so they figure out where she was but then all of a sudden a bunch of walkers surrounded the van meanwhile this van is like half off of the um one of them interstate bridges and they were like on there and they they didn't they had they didn't know what to do <laughs> so they had no choice but to stay in the van and fucking push the van over and um i'm not gonna lie my ass would not be doing that i'm sorry like they were in then the whole van fucking careened over the um interstate and ended up y'all know how the interstates is like have so many different loops and stuff like that that shit scares me because i think if an accident happens the car is going to flip over and come into the part that i'm driving on I, was, I used to be so scared of that in the states but anyway so yeah they fell down and the car the van dropped and they got out with minor injuries and they walked a little further and they got to another building. I forget what building this was now, but um, they got to another building and um, come to find out they found everybody hates Chris in there. And um, after that, I don't know what the fuck happened because my shit cut off and it only had eight minutes left. So I don't know what how it ended. I'm like, I was so pissed. I was like, fuck. Because I was all into it. And so I don't know how Walking Dead ended. I'm going to try. Um, see if I could watch it again later. Or yeah, I'm going to try to download it later. Uh, what else? What else um, am I going to talk about? Uh, I'm going to do a revenge quickly. Um, so last. Emily finally tells her daddy who the hell she is. And then Victoria ended up getting electrocuted by a down power line and um this episode started when they were in the hospital emily didn't want to call for 911 because her dad thought that she was scared but she really was pissed at victoria she's like this bitch need to fucking die and i don't care so yeah um then emily kind of was like telling her daddy that if you knew all the shit that she has put me through and all the shit that she did to you you wouldn't be saving our ass. And anyway. So yeah. That was kind of um interesting. They she didn't talk to him for like a couple of days in their world. Well there in that episode. And um from there as you remember Nolan bought um this not the stowaway, that bougie country club. Who is that? Oh. Um, bought that bougie country club and um, now the uh, bartenders didn't want to serve any of the patrons because they still think that he stole the money from David daughter Amanda from Amanda but yet yeah, Amanda is really Emily and Emily really had all the money yeah y'all know but um, so everybody still thinks that he's uh he stole all his money and um he stole his daughter's money and then so everybody ain't on his run like that they kind of write him off and all his workers quit and um he's like whatever uh nolan i like nolan he kind of he cracks me up he really doesn't give a shit about anything so yeah nolan ends it up ends up being chummy chummy with busty the busty redhead i finally figured out her name is louise lord her ass is fucking crazy i'm just saying um, so at one point she tries to go see Victoria while she was in the hospital and then um, she got turned away by the security and she gave the, fuck, she gave the flowers and um, she get the flowers and then she walked away and then all of a sudden her mother started talking to her and then she was like, um, you never gave me flowers. Then you realize this bitch hearing shit in her head and then you understand why the hell she was in a fucking mental institution like okay so yeah um i kind of like her i still like her crazy ass though um so yeah moving on she what else happened margot and daniel got in an argument they broke up and then louise tried to sleep with daniel again she wrote a note on uh, margot stationery saying to meet her upstairs in the shower or something like that and um daniel run hard when he realized it wasn't margot 
And, um, yeah, <laughs> that was it. Um, I'm done with them. Anyway, moving on. Um, what else happened? Nolan and Busty Louise was, um, talking and realizing how much he, she was saying how it was one thing that she couldn't get was, um, Daniel, I believe, or something. But, um, she showed him her iPad, which had a poll saying that uh, David should sue Nolan for all his money. And then Nolan read it, and then he, I guess he pet something to move the, um, y'all know how iPads is work, move the screen. Um, from there, he noticed that it was a bunch of pictures with Louise and Victoria, but then these pictures were like their heads pasted on two best friends, just regular pictures, stuff like that. And then he realized this bitch is crazy too. And um, early in the episode, Margot tried to bribe uh, Nolan into unlocking her records because her records were sealed or something like that. Um, this Louise now. Um, so yeah, that's when Nolan realized that she was crazy. Then he went to Margot and um, she, he made a deal with Margo to unseal her records to find out what the hell really went on with Louise's crazy ass. Okay, from them, what else happened? Uh, David and Emily, they had their little scene. They, I guess, they didn't really make up, but they came to an understanding that um, he got some shit to deal with, some people who he was hiding out from. Um, which is why he couldn't come back to her like that. Um, so yeah, they came to understanding that she wouldn't get involved. But then, you know, Emily, she still ended up getting involved. She had one of the people who tried to beat her daddy up in the hospital with Victoria. But yeah, that was revenge. Uh, let's do Scandal real quick. Scandal. The only thing I can say about Scandal is... um. It was a good episode, but the whole highlight of the episode was the last five minutes was when Daddy Pope and Olivia was in the restaurant. They was talking and um, it was like, I, I don't understand how Olivia, Jake and Fitz didn't realize that Daddy Pope would know what the fuck going on. Like y'all really think the minute Jake got out of prison that he didn't find out and then he knew that some fuck shit was going on? Like, come on now. I knew something was going on, but I didn't expect it to go down like that. Like, he um, shot all of the president's agents and stuff like that. And I'm like, wow, you you fucked up. You really fucked up. I like Daddy Pope, but Olivia, you really fucked up. Like, that was a bad plan to begin with. Um, yeah. But um, I kind of expected something to happen because I knew his ass wasn't going to jail. Like, you really believe that? Anyway, they say Mother Pope's supposed to be coming in the next, in the winter finale. I read that online. So I hope that's true because I miss her. I really miss her on the show. She was fucking crazy and she brought a different side to the crazy of Scandal. And that kept it interesting last season. So I hope she is coming back. Um, so let me do How to Get Away with Murder right quick. Um... Okay, well, I, me and Alfred Enoch were like this from Harry Potter time. Like, that's my good buddy. But he's, well, this West character is so fucking stupid. Like, and Rebecca Ass is fucking stupid too. Like, fucking Anna Lee, she tell this nigga, Lila's pregnant. Lila was pregnant, but I don't want you to tell Rebecca just yet because she'll do some shit to fuck up her case. And then cut to the next scene. Yeah, you know fucking Lila was pregnant. I was like, this nigga, are you serious? Like, you fucking whatless dread. Like, are you... I can't. I can't even. <sighs> oh, but um, the episode was good. Um, Rebecca ends up... She's still working with um, Annalise's ex-boyfriend. But then she finally told Wet. No, Wes saw what was going on. And then he was like... He fucking row her ass. Like, she deserved to be like, you don't know this. That's her fucking boyfriend. And you around here working with him. Now she knows that I lied to her and she wouldn't trust me with anything and blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, they had it out. But, um, 
that was kind of Rebecca, dumb of Rebecca though. Then another dumb move that she did. She's like, oh, I left my gloves here when she went back to the house and only, um, what's his name was there. I'm like, oh, that was so stupid. That wasn't even slick. Like, oh, can I use your bathroom? I'm like, that wasn't even smooth. But like, at least wait until everybody gets there. Then search the house. Not search the house. Then just say, can I, where's the bathroom? And then you can get the DNA from that. I'm like, girl, what is wrong with you, babe? That, that wasn't smooth at all. Like, you, you need some help. You're supposed to be all this G sh you like you're really supposed to be a G and ugh, that was dumb. <laughs> anyway, um I didn't watch American Horror Story yet. I missed last week's episode and I missed last night's episode. I'm gonna download them either today or tomorrow. And um I'll talk about those two episodes in the next um T V talk video. But yeah, um, thanks for hearing me run on for fucking ever on a bunch of shit. <laughs> Had to get the shit up my head, but that's just my opinion on all of that. Um, thank y'all for watching and thank you if you watched that blog talk video because I know that was a bunch of shit and I was like lated. But yeah, thanks for watching and y'all have a great day. Have a great weekend. What else? Like, comment, and subscribe. Share it if you want to. Um, yeah. <laughs> See y'all later.